Let's take a look at the reaction between sodium and chlorine to give you sodium chloride. And noting that sodium chloride is an ionic compound and it's made up of sodium ion and chloride ion. So sodium is going from a neutral element made up of neutral atoms. So it's going from having no charge to a plus one charge. Chlorine, likewise, is going from being in a its elemental state. It's diatomic, but it's still the element chlorine. So it's going from having no charge to forming a chloride ion with a negative one charge. So during this reaction, sodium lost an electron, which is known as an oxidation or we say sodium has been oxidized. Chlorine gained electrons, so it has undergone reduction, or it has been reduced. So this is what we call an oxidation reduction or redox reaction for short. And they are very common types of reactions. And they're not limited to cases where you have, you know, a metal and a nonmetal forming an, an ionic compound. In fact, there doesn't have to be ions involved at all. For example, you look at the reaction between phosphorus and chlorine to give you phosphorus trichloride. So in this case, we're forming a covalent compound. There aren't any ions involved. But, this, but yet this could still be a redox reaction, even though it's not as obvious at, to start with as this one. So in cases like this, to help us figure out who's losing and gaining electrons, we use these things called oxidation numbers. And what they are are real or fake charges that we simply use to help us figure out who's undergoing oxidation or reduction in a redox reaction. So they're given different ways in different books. The way I like to give them is this six rules given in decreasing priority. So starting with number one, if it's in its elemental state, whether it's monatomic, diatomic, or polyatomic, they're going to have a zero oxidation number. If it's a monatomic ion, a charged atom, whatever its real charge is, that'll be its oxidation number. So sodium ion will have an oxidation number of plus one. Iron two will be plus two, and nitride will have a negative three oxidation number. And for the last six, these deal with specific elements or specific types of elements. Um, Fluorine is initially given an oxidation number of negative one, hydrogen plus one, oxygen negative two, and all the other halogens have an oxidation number of negative one as well. But the reason we split the halogens up is because fluorine, remember these are given in a priority sequence, so fluorine's got a higher priority than hydrogen and oxygen, but the halogens have a lower priority. Another rule we use is known as the algebraic sum rule, which says that the sum of the oxidation numbers has to equal the overall charge of the compound. So if it's a neutral compound, they add up to zero. If it's a polyatomic ion, the oxidation numbers have to add up to whatever that ion's charge is. So using oxidation numbers for the second example, Phosphorus is in its elemental state, so it's given an oxidation number of zero. Also, chlorine is given a zero oxidation number. For PCl3, we're given a rule for chlorine. It's one of the other halogens, and it's going to have an oxidation number of negative one. There's no rule for phosphorus, but we can figure it out using the algebraic sum rule. 
So phosphorus and those three chlorines have to add up to give you zero because it's a neutral compound. Again, chlorine is negative one, so solving for phosphorus, phosphorus has to equal plus three. So phosphorus is going from a zero oxidation number to a plus three oxidation number. So even though we're dealing with a fake charge here, all right, phosphorus doesn't usually form a cation. It's usually negative three, like all the other ones in group five. But even though we're dealing with fake charges, we can still use oxidation numbers like we use real charges in our previous example. If we treat them like real charges to go from a zero to a plus three charge, that requires a loss of electrons. Which means, oops, not oxidation. And again, a loss of electrons is an oxidation, not a reduction, which I almost said. Chlorine is going from zero to a negative one oxidation number, but again, it's just like going from a zero to a negative one charge. We can treat these fake charges just like we treat the real charges in this example. So to go from zero to negative one, whether it's a real charge or a fake charge, and again, it's a fake charge here because it's a covalent compound, that requires a gain of electrons. So this one's the reduction.